It's an international day of awareness held annually on the second Thursday of October to focus attention on the global issues of eye health. Now this year it falls on the 14th of October, which is today, which is today in history. All right. So you're in for a treat for those of you who might be having um, challenges with your sight. If you're visually impaired or you're not totally visually impaired, you just have one or two issues. I think you should tune in right now. Um, I hope I can get your messages off Facebook and all of that so that we can have more questions for our doctor here, who is of course an MBBS um, of Lagos 2019, a senior registrar at Guinness Eye Center Ophthalmology Department, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, a member of the West African College of Surgeon, and also a member of the Royal College of Surgeon, Edinburgh, and a fellow of the International Council of Ophthalmology. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dr. Salako Tolani to my far left. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Thank you for here. coming on the show. And Thank of you. course, with her, we also have a visually impaired person who is also, it's also impressive that we had them come on the show today because some, I'm not visually impaired, but, you know, it's also great that you hear from the horse's mouth the challenges faced and um, various issues that they think they've been sorted for and those that they still feel like it's pending. And the visual... Our guest today is Daniel Isaiah, who is the Rehabilitation Manager at the Resource Center for the Blind, which is situated in Yaba, Lagos. Uh, he's a tech entrepreneur um, who is visually impaired but has contributed his quota to the advancement of his community. That's the blind and the visually impaired community. He has skills, social skills, and, you know, he's just an all-round person who is not um, hindered by his situation but he's been able to even encourage other people and help other visually impaired um, individuals. Thank you, Daniel, for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you as well. It's interesting to have both of you here, okay. Doctor <laughs> and Daniel. So is it just Mr. Daniel, or do you have any, you know, pre to your name? Maybe? No, it's fine. Mr. is fine. Mr. PhD Daniel. doctor. Anything can happen for you. We can never really <laughs> tell. Uh, all right, so um, this year, today is the World Sight Day. Um, I think we should start with the problems that we have seen in the in the in the society so we start from the society before we go into every other sector of the economy now daniel you um from the onset were you born visually impaired or it happened along the way okay so um for me i wasn't born this way uh it happened when i was um 13. okay yeah so um i started having these itchy eyes you know things of things but um due to ignorance of my parents then you're not really aware of what exactly to be done. So okay. not until, you know, it got worsened and uh, we paid a visit, visit, you know, to the clinic and um, it was confirmed that um, the eyes is beyond um, what medical, you know, could um, take care of. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. So um, how, what was your, your state of mind at that point? I know you were pretty young. Yeah. What was your state of mind? And... Where was the turning point for you? I mean, that's that space from when you felt that this is my new life to when you now decided to own it and move forward. Yeah, so at that point, as, as a little child I was then, it was so, like, blackout, too painful. And then, you know, for about six years, I was just at home eating, sleeping, you know, mm -hmm. thinking that is the way I'll keep, you know, uh, living my life. Not until um, 20... Or seven, I met someone. I said, "Ah, um, you this boy could still go to school." That was when we now uh, went to a blind school in Sulewe, and after which um, I continued from there and up to now. So, a turning point for me is that point whereby I discovered that um, you know, with 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 the aid of ICT, you know, the world is made more easier for persons with you know um, you know blindness, uh, regardless of your sight or. Or challenges, you know, shouldn't be a limitation um, to certain things. I personally, uh, I I work for um, LCB as I said earlier, mm. and um, I train people on the use of um, assistive devices, yeah. and um, also I train blind persons on um, other independent living skills that um, we we build um, the um, being productive in the community itself. Okay, so before, how did you come about that information? Um, before I go to the doctor, how did you come about that information to say, okay, these are my challenges? You could first start with highlighting those challenges before you now decided, okay, maybe these are the ways I can go about it. Okay. For myself first, before thinking of the others. Okay, of course. I said then, I went to a series of uh, 
rehabilitating um, skills training, went to school for the blind. I was taught how to read Braille, how to make it you know, of the computer, after which I went to do um, the high school um, in Janiki from there, University of Lagos, where I studied mm. history. So along that line, I discovered my passion that uh, if I, I could have um, this you know, luxurious life to, to, to acquire such education, I think um, uh, you know, may, many people are out there that are not aware mm. that um, a blind person or a blind child they have at home can still go to school and sure. becomes better. Yeah. So I took that up. Okay, fine. I, I think I, I love these and I went into the field. Okay, so doctor, um, you heard his story. I mean, it's not like he was born with it. And sometimes ignorance too is also a major challenge. Um, what are these, the causes of some of these issues that, you know, might just happen to any child or anyone who isn't even born visually impaired? Uh, is it, I mean, is it the way they live or is it environmental? What are the, sim the similar causes of this? Okay, well, thank you very much for having me here, and it's a pleasure to have this opportunity to enlighten people about the world's ID and the importance of eye health. Yes, like he said, one of the major challenges we deal with, especially in this part of the country, is late presentation. Mm. And because primarily a lot of the people out there don't even know what to look out for in their children when they are born. I don't know what his story was or what the cause of the problem was, but a lot of the population are not even sensitized about what could be wrong with their child when they were born. Mm -hmm. One of the major problems that could also have happened, I don't know, is congenital cataracts. Mm, what's that? That's when you, an, a baby or a child is born with cataracts. We okay. have the age-related cataracts at one spectrum, and then we have the congenital cataract at the other spectrum. So congenital cataract is where a child is born early in life, whether as, as at birth, it could be noticed at birth, mm -hmm. or in the first few months of life, where there is opacification, that's like clouding oh, of the eye. lens that is supposed to be crystal clear that would allow projection of light from the external environment into the eye. So imagine looking through a mirror, and then you have powder splattered on it, mm. or like a white speck covering it. There's no way a clear image is going to penetrate through the eye mm. for it to even get to the back of the eye, for it to send a signal to the brain. So what happens is a lot of mothers don't even know these problems. So even when they do know, because of the environment we find ourselves in, delayed presentation, they don't even know where to go to. And even when they know where to go, they believe that doing other things, maybe by applying some herbal concussion, mm. will solve the problem. And because these children are still at a very young age, yeah. and there is need for visual stimulation, if the high doesn't get the appropriate stimulation at the appropriate time, mm. there's going to be loss of vision in that high. And there's what's going to be amblyopia, which is lazy high. So eventually, when they do present, it's too late. And we then have to battle with doing the surgery, which does not even guarantee optimal vision return. Because mm. already the child is beyond the age for visual maturation. And already that eye is almost completely gone. So we still end up trying to do surgery, which is like the, 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 the surgical options you have for, for cataract. So when you do that, before you do that, you have to battle with amblyopia. Okay. which is the downside of the late presentation and most importantly especially when it is unilateral okay that's on one eye one high so one high is completely knocked off because the brain has interpreted that this eye isn't seen again oh. and then one high is it's is seen clear. it's clear and sometimes the children even present it by lateral congenital cataracts so sometimes you're getting a child nine years seven years and you are like where have you been as we, have you, haven't you seen any high doctor? Oh, uh, we saw, but we thought it was going to be. So those are part of the major challenges. Late presentation, because a lot of this problem, in fact, 80% of the causes of visual blindness and visual impairments is actually preventable. It's avoided. It's avoidable. We can avoid it. That is one. Another spectrum, especially coming from him, because we're talking about noticing these things from early yeah. child. Another very common problem we have in our environment is congenital glaucoma. Okay, what's that? That's also, we have a spectrum that affects individuals over 40 years and above, and we also okay. have this that affects children mm. born. They are born okay. and then they are at birth, and then they have this problem. Here, you see mothers, you know, usually one of the three things people would 
notice is that this child tends to have this aversion to light. Mm -hmm. You notice that their eyes are completely shut. Yeah. They refuse to open their eyes. You notice that they tear a lot. And that is because of the response to the light. The, corner, the, the sensitive part of the eye is exposed because the eye gradually enlarges. And that is because of the build-up of pressure in that the eye. eye. Oh, wow. So That's... when the cornea, which is the clear part of the eye, which is the most sensitive part, is one of the richly innervated tissues in the body. Mm. So once this is exposed, they become sensitized, they and tearing. that's what we call photophobia. They okay. start tearing. And so we'll talk about even the solutions to this. We'll okay. take a short break now, because this is a whole lot to take in, to be honest. And why I'm even shocked is that we have, have witnessed a couple of, even my nephew, complaining about eye issues and stuff of that, you know. And we all like, oh, don't worry, wash it, it'll be fine. Not knowing that. We are learning, but we don't know that we should actually tackle these issues. So it, it goes home. You know, but we'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll continue this conversation with Dr. Salako and of course Daniel in the studio. It's still the world side day and don't forget it's also throwback Thursday. All right, so we'll go on a short break and when we come back, we'll continue with the conversation. Welcome back from that break. Still celebrating World Sight Day. Um, the basic problems we see in our society as individuals, as that neighbor next door from your kids and even an adult. The solutions also, we are trying to prefer everything here on the show today. And with me to my far left is Dr. Salako, who is here as well to talk about these issues. Um, Senior Registrar, University of Lagos. And of course, Daniel, who is also visually impaired and who has really first-hand experience the challenges that we are trying to highlight here today. So we're talking about a few other courses um, from the medical aspect. So we'll just conclude on the second one you were okay, saying. Yes. And also we'll go back to Daniel to talk about physical challenges. So making it brief, what are the... Um, the solutions to the second causes that you were just highlighting okay. before we went on the break? Just like the first um, cause I mentioned, surgical intervention. Cataracts, the mainstay of treatment is surgical mm. removal, especially if we're talking about the congenital type where children are born with it. Also congenital glaucoma, mm. no other way out, no shortcut. The treatment is surgical. Mm. And then interestingly, once the cataract is removed, that's why it's reversible. Vision is expected to return to normal. And that is why it's so crucial for people to present early so that they can get the appropriate treatment. So the best solution is presentation early. You need to present. For learn. you to get appropriate diagnosis, you need to first present to the hospital and then appropriate medical intervention. Mm -hmm. And then we so take it up from there. So do you think that our lifestyle as, as individuals or as humans could also cause these situations i mean our lifestyles maybe the things we eat the kind of things or the environment we we live in or the kind of things we indulge in as human beings daniel what do you think uh well i'm not a doctor but um there is this belief that um when you take um gary when you take uh, coconut water uh, all those things have an um, effect on yeah, your site but i don't know how to start is that true doctor <laughs> well, no not necessarily oh okay Go ahead, Daniel. So I don't know how to is that, though, but uh, I also believe that everything we do, you know, have these um, side effects on our health generally. Okay. Doctor, do you want to also add to yes, that? Yes, I want to add to that. Like, health is wealth. That's the long shot of it. And um, health is affected by so many factors. We have environmental factors. We have genetic factors that are contributing to it. So we cannot neglect the environmental factors. And when we're talking about environmental factors, we talk about having a healthy lifestyle, yeah. which involves you eating right. It's better and much more healthy for you to eat green leafy vegetables, for okay. you to take a lot of water, for you to take um, nutrient-rich food, balanced diet and eat food that are rich in some nutrients like lutein and zeaxanthin, which have been proven to reduce the, some of this, the risk of coming down with some of this um, high condition. And most importantly also, because what we also need to understand is that the high doesn't operate in isolation. A lot of the systemic issues we have also have significant impact on the high. For example, if you have diabetes, poorly controlled diabetes is a common cause of loss of vision. Mm. Hypertension is a cause of loss of vision. So if you have poorly controlled diabetes, it's definitely going to take a turn in your eye and it can affect the back of the eye. And sometimes it can lead to complete loss of vision in that eye. So that is why we advise to avoid sedentary lifestyles, which 
21st century, we go into our car, we drive, we get to air conditioned environment. We yeah. are too busy chasing, you know, life for yeah. us to actually take time out to go to the gym, exercise, you know, do all those. And of course, very important is the vascular risk factor, which mm. is smoking. Okay. So that has okay, been... Okay, you heard? Stop smoking. <laughs> At least reduce, <laughs> reduce it. Reduce it. So oh, that is a significant risk factor to not only the systemic problems we have, like the myocardial infections and the likes of it, but mm. also one of the major cause of visual impairment, which is age-related macular degeneration. This just affects the most sensitive part of the eye. So smoking is a significant risk factor. So we factor. have diabetes, we have uh, hypertension. hypertension, we have uh, smoking. Any yes, other, any other smoking, problem? and then um, 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 I've talked about the need to exercise. Okay. And of course, people that are hypertensive, they need to cut down on intake of salts. Okay, okay. And instead of um, eating a lot of junk food, it's better to eat vegetables, green leafy ve ve vegetables and broccoli and the likes of that. Spinach, they've been said to promote good high health and in fat. So if you have a good eating habit mm. and all of that, it's said it to promote But you know that the, the, the world is such a vast place that not everyone has access to a couple of these, um, I mean, access or funds to go to a doctor, to okay. be honest. We have the minority okay. where you're just living on the streets, hustling day-to-day -day lives. And some of them eventually get visually impaired. Maybe not totally, but one eye, you see them on the streets, you're begging and all of those things. How do you think that we, as an organization, even trying to put something together for this World Sight Day, how do you think that we can help them not probably get off the streets, but live better? Even if, yes, they're still doing all the things they do on the streets, you know, hawking and all of that, but live a better way to even still help them improve their lives. So since you are in that space, um, Daniel, do you care to share? How yeah, you so um, that's why at um, our center, we have an upcoming event. You know, luckily also, on the 15th of every October, is um, said to be World White Cane Day. Now, the White Cane Day is um, a cane that aids the mobility of a blind person. Now, without you being around, I, c I could move easily on my own, freely, okay. independently. White so, cane. White cane okay, day, that's every the... 15th of, of October. Oh, wow. um, so we have a program for this Saturday, 16th of October, whereby we are giving out um, free guide canes to blind users and also um, you know, giving out um, free eye screening for every attendees on that um, program. We do, you know, we didn't know the um, cost of um, um, you know eye checkup and all those things. So we have partnered with um, clinics in Lagos and the um, general hospitals. So bringing in um, um, you know optometries, they be there with their, um, you know with their equipment, okay. giving um, eye screening, drugs and glasses when needed. Okay. On that day. Just on the 16th? Yeah, in the 16th. On the 16th. But you know this is once in a year. I know you guys also have a program that you're working on. Yes. Um, is, it, uh, is it affiliated to the University of Lagos or is it just in your own space? Is is the Ophthalmology Society of Nigeria. Okay, organized. so tell us a bit about that event and how people can actually key into it for those who think that they can't really afford a couple of these hospitals and they think that that's the best place to Well, to. you know, because of the pandemic, normally we would, by now, Lagos University Teaching Hospital, we would have organized an outreach, like a screening where everybody, the clinic is open to everybody and people yeah. can come in. Usually that is what we do. We screen people, we, get up, we give out glasses, we give out high drops, and then we also write letters to them so that they can come back into the clinic and they can, you know, we can perfect. follow them up. That's what we do basically. But for now, I know I'm aware regarding this word site day, there's a program going on. It's going to be here um, by 5 p.m. on Zoom. People can actually log in to get more information. And I'm also aware that I allow Saturday, you know, even though it's going to be for elderly today. today yes, even, even though it's going to be for elderly, I know it's open to people to come in and also have their hair, eyes checked. So, it's a celebration of World Health. Yes. What, aside from that, normally we do routine eye checks. We go to schools, we go to mosques, we go to churches. We just you have not reached my estate too. <laughs> all this we go to. I've not seen any anybody in my estate say come and do I. So we actually do this. We go to churches and mosques and schools mm. where we offer free high screening and also give them glasses and high job and refer appropriately back to us so that we can adequately monitor them. So these are some of the things we do to actually encourage people to get more aware of their high health. 
All right, so do you think that the, the, even when we go to the clinics and all these kids or people or adults, whoever, go and they receive glasses, like corrective glasses, and in the long run, if you're really consistent with your glasses and all of that, do they eventually correct the defects that might have affected your eyes or is just a, a way of, you know, kind of like managing the situation? Okay. Yes, I would like to comment that. Well, it depends on what the problem is. If it is strictly refractive error, which it can either be short-sightedness, long-sightedness, or astigmatism. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you come in, you do the basic test, which is one of the basic tests that you need to do if you're coming for an eye exam, which is a visual acuity. We want to know the extent of how much you can see. Okay. And then once that is established, and we know this is refractive error, the patient is going to be refracted and glasses is going to be recommended. But a lot of the times, people have aversion to glasses. Mm. And then they ask you, does this mean I have to wear this for the rest of my life? Or is it curative? Yeah. So that's we, that's, that's the word. Yeah, curative. curative. So we always like to tell them that, no, we have a problem. That is the um, refractive error. And the whole solution to mm -hmm. that is to wear glasses. Yeah. Of course, after some times, because the, the eyes have been working under strain, because what you should see, you know, yeah, not naturally without you naturally, you are not seeing it. You're, you're, you're having your high muscles work under a lot of tension to mm. see some things. So when they put on the glasses, it's like a whole new world. Everything becomes clear. And the highs, they have less headache, they have l less high hicks. And they're like, wow, so this is what I've been missing. So after some time and they use it, they feel that, oh, they can come off the glasses because they can now open, remove the glasses and they see that they are seeing better. That is because the high muscles that were initially strained are now relaxed. So, but when you now go about your duty and leave your glasses for a long period of time, you go back to where you started from. So mm -hmm. a lot of people can say, well, I've not, be, I've not used my glasses in the last five years and yeah, I'm fine. I'm so fine. by the time they are going to come back, they are going to come back with a lot of asthenopic symptoms, which wow. is headache, and all heartache, stress, like stress back to square one. yes, back to square one. So I would like to say, if you have refractive error, you need to wear glasses and wear it appropriately for you to have. Mm. So it's something you need to wear. It's not for a long time. It's, 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 yeah. Maybe the Basically. rest of your life. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yes. Yeah, right, so Daniel, do you think, I mean, on the regular, on, in, in general, do you think the society has been fair enough with the visually impaired persons? Um, I would say yes, but um, we still need to do more, um, more awareness. Okay. Um, the government has been doing, um, like the, uh, the government has been doing a lot. We have an agency um, the caters for the um, referendum of uh, persons with uh, disabilities in Lagos. And uh, at the federal level, too, we have a new, new commissioned um, agency, too. But um, it's still, for me, it's still work in progress yeah. because um, it's just more of um, you know, surface scratching. Okay. Yeah, so we've not really done a lot. But um, as time goes by, uh, more efforts and the more hands have to be you know, put on deck for a better output. Mm, because I was going to also ask in, ask in the business sector, in the, politic, the political sector as well. We, we don't see a lot of um, visually impaired people. The same way they say, oh, albinism is a problem. You know, the way they, they categorize them and put them mm. in a space. So do you, what, do you, what do you now think that the, the, the society can do to, you know, give them a fair chance at everything as well as the other regular guy who sees properly on the street? You know, people just have this belief that uh, once you're disabled, um, you know, you know, you are not um, equal again. And meanwhile, if you ask me, everybody are all disabled in one way or the other. Mm. If you have diabetes, you are disabled. If you have high blood pressure, you are disabled. Not until you have, a, you know, a visible um, disability before you become disabled. Mm. So I know, more or less, we are all equal, uh, you know, before the law. So at the same time, we should be given a fair treatment, like, you know, um, you know, uh, you know just like the others, you know, are done. But um, as I said earlier, more works have to be done, like, seriously. Because um, when they see you, one thing they see you first is, mm, he's blind, he can't, he can't do it. Mm. But have you given him a chance to see if he can or he cannot? So let the society give each one an equal chance exactly. at doing everything. Exactly. And being a and part of know, the reactivity. And, you know, and that's why um, coming this Saturday, we'll be creating, um, having a walk, a rally from Yaba to Igbo. Uh, you know, um, whereby we use our canes for the rally down to Ibo. You know, some people will see you with a cane as a blind person and they'll, they'll approach you with the money. Yeah. I'm thinking, embarrassing, no, I I'm not a beggar. See me mm. dress this way, 
walking to work and giving money for what? Rather, you know, for me, you, you know, you don't blame them. They are not enlightened enough. Meanwhile, you can just ask the person, hello, or excuse me, do you need help? Not the harm given. It's not every person you see on the it's street beggar. are beggars. Mm. You get now. So this awareness has to be done fully. And that's why forthcoming this weekend, we're doing the awareness by 8 o'clock um, at Yaba, um, Bonui to um, Onyibo. And after which, we have a symposium where we have um, um, doctors, you know, talking about um, love your eyes for the team of this year. And at the same time, we also um, give um, free eye screening to all attendees. All right. Thank you so much. Any last words, doctor? I mean... For anyone who is watching, what you just think, I mean, the basics, you think you want to okay. make sure that they take note of um, going forward on okay. hashtag love your eyes. Okay, hashtag love your eyes. Yes, I'll just quickly run through this. Yes, glaucoma, I've mentioned it before. It's particularly important, and I'm going to stress it, because it is the commonest cause of irreversible loss of vision. Mm. And interestingly, Africans are at a high risk of developing glaucoma. Not are we only at high risk. We are at risk of having the severe form of glaucoma and actually going blind right. from glaucoma. A lot of factors have been implicated because of the, um, 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 the, the our skin color and a lot of genetic predisposition has been attributed to that. But what I want to stress is a lot of people, when they get the diagnosis of glaucoma, the, the part I want to stress is that once you get a diagnosis of glaucoma, it's not a death sentence. It's for you to hone it and live up to it because the care depends on you largely. You, okay. you can only be supported by your doctors. And managing glaucoma requires high level of compliance with your medication, which can either be high drops or surgical but a lot of the time in our society we usually start most of our patients okay. with high drop and see how they fare and if they are not doing as well as we want we then go through the surgical intervention mm. but the problem is the apathy I talked about so sometimes a lot of this patient walking blind mm. at presentation either in one high or both highs they don't even know they did not know that they had glaucoma so they are coming to you for the first time and they are blind and it's so sad that you can't do anything about it because why? It is an irreversible loss of vision. So sometimes these patients get the diagnosis probably 10 years or 15 years ago. And then they come and then you ask, they say, oh, I've used the high drop for some time. And I stopped because I wasn't seeing significant improvement. Mm. So most times when I come in contact with this patient and I and we've walked them through all the tests and then there is a diagnosis of the glaucoma staring at us in the eye. The first thing I tell them is sometimes ophthalmologists may appear as being brash, sometimes, but sometimes we need to hear the truth. So when a, a patient is in front of me, I tell them, I, I, I like to be empathic, but I also like to say it as it is. I'm very empathic when it comes to attending to my patient, but I let them know because if I don't, is going to cost them their vision. So what I tell them is, this is where we are. There is a diagnosis of glaucoma. We can't change that. Yeah. What you need to do is to maintain the vision you have right now. Yeah. There are lots of glaucoma patients are walking around with um, good vision. Yeah. So the most important thing is that you need to maintain your yeah, vision, true, be true, compliant true. with your medication to reduce the risk of going blind from glaucoma. All right. Another thing I want to talk about is the visual impairment, which has to do with... Yeah, but we'll have to, to go... Because I know that it's a lot of conversations we need to have, but I'm sure that they've gotten the message that they should first make sure that whenever they see a situation or observe something with the defects with their eyes, they should first That's quickly... Different go for a checkup and yes. follow up yes. with your doctor whoever yes. you've gone to check up with thank you so much doctor for coming on the show um i wish you could stay all through the I day wish but, so you know, we come out because it's a 55 minute show thank you so much daniel for sharing yeah, thank you. um i think it's a, it's a one step to being very courageous to come out to say this is who i am and owning it as it is um ladies and gentlemen don't go anywhere we still have another round of guests another round of conversations don't forget it's still throwback thursday because we'll be having a throwback you know song on the show and another guest who is an artist and a humanitarian 
come through to have a conversation with us. We'll be right back after this break.